Welcome to our training on Privacy Defined. My name is Juliana Cotto and I'm a Policy Fellow for the Youth and Education at the Future of Privacy Forum. The objectives of this module are to one, explore the meaning of privacy, and two, understand why privacy is important. This may be the first time you've really considered privacy, and it's important to dive into the nuances of what privacy is and what it isn't. People tend to think of privacy as having something to hide, which can be true, but not exclusively. There are parts of our lives that we might not be hiding per se, but just wanna keep private. Maybe we think that if this information were to be revealed, it would result in others treating us differently. Privacy is about having the choice about who can know what about you. So we've said that privacy just isn't about something you wanna hide, so what more is it? And that's not an easy question to answer. Privacy changes depending on context. Think about it. What you want your doctor to know will probably be quite different than you might want your child or your coworker to know. Information isn't private or not private. The situation and the people who you are sharing the information with matters. And privacy means different things to different people. A great way to illustrate this point that privacy is contextual and means different things to different people is through Carnegie Mellon University's Privacy Illustrated Project. This project asks people, including kids, to draw what privacy means to them. And we're gonna go through some of the answers as they reflect many of the ways privacy might be defined. So privacy can mean being alone and creating private spaces, such as a bedroom, under a blanket, sleeping away from kids or siblings. And this picture from a five-year-old shows her hiding under the covers in her bedroom. Privacy can also mean uh, privacy from physical exposure. So such as being left alone while changing clothes in the bathroom or when bathing. And this picture by Lucinda shows her sister knocking on the door of her bedroom while she's changing. It can also mean having space around you or between other people. So that physical separation with doors, fences, and walls. And this picture by Eli H7 shows him being left alone while he's in the bathroom. It can also mean privacy of thoughts and ideas. So protecting your internal thoughts as well as preventing others from using your thoughts, say like in cheating. And this picture by Elizabeth shows what would happen if other people could read your thoughts. Privacy also brings up the question of surveillance, so being watched or monitored. This is most often portrayed by Big Brother government entities or by companies watching you. It can also mean online privacy, which is what we will mostly discuss through these online trainings. So this can mean everything from computer security, passwords, locks, webcams, or even concerns about spam or privacy on social media. So now that these illustrations and this project has helped to elaborate on what privacy can mean, let's now talk about why is privacy important? And in many of our following modules, especially why protect student data module, we're really going to dive into why privacy for our students is so important. But here's some top level information. First and foremost, once information leaves, it is very difficult to get it back to where it belongs. Think about getting toothpaste back into a bottle. Additionally, there can be both short and long-term harms when data is collected, used, or shared. And finally, privacy should not be a barrier to helping students. Instead, it can protect students, protect their futures, protect them from bullying or misuse of their data, and it can ultimately give them agency over their own information and their education broadly. Here are some core principles of privacy. We can think about these principles as what people want when they think about privacy. So first, people want notice. What information about them is being created and how will it be used? People also want choice. So that choice to opt in or opt out, whether and how information is being used. People also want to be able to consent or not consent. And when they don't consent, that means that information about them will not be collected, used, or shared. People also want their information to be secured, so they don't want it to be breached, misused, or lost. Next, people want to make sure information about them is accurate, reliable, complete, and current. This is especially important in the school context. 
Think about a mistake in a transcript that can have significant importance to a student's future and opportunities. People want to make sure they have access to the information about them, that they can verify it. And they want to make sure that whoever has the data, using it or collecting it, that that entity or person is held accountable for ensuring these principles are followed and that there's some type of repercussion or consequence if any of these rights are violated. In future modules, we will discuss how these rights play out and who has these rights, the student, the parent, or the school. In these training modules, we will focus on student data collection, use, and sharing, and we will focus on discussing privacy in the K-12 school context, so data collected for or through a school. Now we would like you to complete a card sorting activity. The link to this activity can be found below. Arrange the white cards, types of data about you, underneath the blue categories, how that data can be collected or shared by how you want that type of data to be collected or shared. So for example, I personally want Google to keep my search history, but I don't want anyone other than me and Google to see or use it. So I would drag the type of data past six months of Google search history underneath collected or stored, but remains private to me in the company org. You might not prefer that it be collected at all. So you would drag that under not collected or stored. We would also like you to reflect on the following questions. One, what does privacy mean to you? What do you think privacy means to your students, your students' families? And two, do you talk to your students about privacy? If so, how? Thank you for joining this training.